Kolkata, 2049 AD. Bengal's biggest government hospital. Is this the kidney or the liver? Huh? What the? How the hell did this stupid doctor even pass the medical exam? He didn't. And this is a possible future scenario if morally corrupt, powerful doctors like Sudeep Toroy, Sandeep Ghosh and Birupaksha Biswas continue to run Bengal's medical system like their fiefdom. Called the North Bengal Doctors' Lobby, they have rigged the healthcare system by controlling everyone, from peon to principal in every government college, and have created this syndicate under the patronage of none other than their political didi, Mamta Banerjee, the Chief Minister. Their dirty deed starts from selling medical college seats to rich loser students for a hefty amount of 5 to 8 lakhs who then are also able, at a cost of course, to get their hands on answer scripts sold openly in medical colleges during exams. Many other students who cannot afford a bribe lick clean the chappals of the powerful lobby to get the privileges of cheating in exam halls using mobile phones and laptops while the teachers look away. And after completion of the course, many of these ponies of the nexus get placed in plush positions in top hospitals or recruit their goons as resident doctors to keep their nexus running smoothly, replicating the process of creating unmeritorious doctors with poor skills, playing with the health and life of people. Other principles of government medical colleges, they control by maintaining an atmosphere of fear. You will take our orders or we will see how your children step out of home. While the sincere, intelligent and hardworking meritorious ones are many a times left in the lurch. Even tougher is the life of female trainee doctors in these hospitals who've had to perform item dance numbers to appease Trinamool Congress party leaders or unfortunately tolerate sexual advances and harassment to get good grades. And don't ask about large-scale corruption malpractices from giving illegal permission to friends to set food and beverage stalls in hospital premises to reserving hospital beds and testing facilities for their rich and loyalists which were ideally meant to be free for the poor. The cartel went to the extent of trafficking unclaimed corpses out of the hospital to a mafia that sold extracted organs from those bodies in a black market, which helped them make a deadly 200 to 300 crore from thin air. And so as not to get caught at RG car, they reduced the number of CCTV cameras from the mandated 415 to a mere 37 in the hospital. And if MBBS students ever got the guts to protest, they would be transferred to rural hospitals or failed in exams. Yet, the situation at RG Car College was so bad that its students and doctors complained many a times against the lobby. But it was only last year that a college disciplinary committee transferred Sandeep Ghosh, the principal and one of the kingpins of the lobby, out of RG Car. But Ghosh Babu was the apple of Mamta's eye who put down her iron fist and made him principal again in just 48 hours. Two months later, in September 2023, when Mamta was safely out of the way in Spain on an official tour, a crusader of justice Akhtar Ali, superintendent of RG Car, felt it was an opportune moment and complained against Ghosh. Yet again, Ghosh was transferred, but the obstinate doctor refused to go and daringly locked the principal's office for a week so that nobody could occupy it until his saviour Mamta Didi came back from Spain and unconditionally reinstated Ghosh at RG Car once again, while punishing Akhtar Ali by getting him sacked for having the audacity to complain. Unfortunately, for a hard-working female doctor at RG Car, events turned out to be much worse. After she reportedly got to know a little too much about the substandard medical drug racket being carried out by this nexus. It was 10.53 a.m. on 9th August when her father's phone rang. The voice on the other side was grave. So your daughter is severely ill. Come to the hospital immediately. What? What happened to my daughter? Who are you? Assistant Superintendent at RG Car Hospital. But it seemed like she wanted to hide something. Uh, sir, we are admitting her to the emergency ward now. Come fast. She's in critical condition. While the parents, still in disbelief, immediately started for the hospital and kept receiving several calls from the hospital urging them to reach fast. Still on the way after 30 minutes, they got a final shocking call. Told you not be late. Your daughter has died by suicide. 
interval. The extent of the cover up was mind boggling as we will tell you. But meanwhile, please subscribe, like, comment and share and press the bell icon and see how the incident was tried to be suppressed. When they reached the hospital, the police and hospital administration stopped the parents from seeing their daughter's body for three and a half hours. Though after the parents saw the doctor's inquest report, they found that their doctor had actually passed away sometime between 3 to 5 a.m. early that morning. This made the father suspicious of foul play because he was informed about the incident around 11 a.m. after a gap of 6 to 8 hours. So the grieving parents immediately went to the police. Sir, we think our daughter was murdered. R.C. Car Hospital is hiding it. Yet, the Kolkata police at Tala shockingly refused to file an FIR. Rather, a senior officer allegedly chided them. You are overreacting. I can get you a settlement and just hurry with the cremation. Huh? But late evening, after the autopsy report revealed 16 external and 9 internal injuries on the frontal side that pointed to sexual violence, the parents were left aghast and demanded a second post-mortem for the back area. Why are they hurrying the process? But before that could happen, the police shamelessly completed the last rites of the body to destroy forensic evidence, that too, without telling the family. Finally, late that night at 11.45 p.m. was the FIR registered, though the inspector wrote insensitively, willful rape and murder. Yet, the next day, 10th August, Principal Sandeep Ghosh pathetically blamed the victim. Being a girl, why did she sleep in the seminar room so late at night? It's totally her fault. This is because, after she had got to know about their corruption, she had complained about Ghosh to higher authorities. In retaliation, Ghosh had her punished by assigning her a grueling 36-hour shift. After its completion, as she was resting in the hospital's seminar hall, the unfortunate event took place. So to cover it up, the next day, Ghosh's henchmen demolished the washroom inside the hospital adjacent to the seminar hall, allegedly to destroy the bloodied footprints from the spot and hand imprints from along the walls where the perpetrator had washed his bloody hands. But wasn't Kolkata police supposed to be protecting the crime scene from contamination? Not if they were in the pockets of the North Bengal doctor lobby kingpin, Sandeep Ghosh. Now, just when they thought they had things under control, other crusaders rolled. Fellow doctors who protested on the streets throughout Kolkata, making it into a huge national issue. And the pressure forced Kolkata police to get their act together. They got a lead through one of the rare working CCTVs in the hospital. At around 3.50 a.m. on the day of the crime, a man wearing a blue earphone was seen entering the seminar hall. An hour later at 5 a.m., he was seen leaving the hall, but this time without his blue earphones, which the police found near the victim's body along with her broken pair of spectacles. That person was Sanjoy Roy ironically posted as a civic volunteer at the hospital's police outpost and reportedly turned out to be a perverted necrophilia porn addict for those who didn't understand that, one who gets sexually excited by corpses. Next day in police custody, Roy confessed to committing the crime and reportedly his semen sample matched as well. But as he was also a loyalist in Ghosh's nexus, who took bribes from patients' families to allow beds and medical tests, he may have been made the fall guy to protect the Ghosh-led doctor's lobby, which might have wanted to silence the victim. His name now firmly cropped up in the case. Ghosh himself resigned the next day, maybe because he knew that he had political protection. Which turned out true, as within a mere four hours, Mamta Didi appointed him the principal of another prestigious government medical college. But this time, the protesting doctors were not going to stay quiet. They petitioned the High Court on bunglings of the police in the incident. Looking at the possibility of investigations being compromised, the court transferred the case from Kolkata police to the CBI. The very next day, a mob of 300 to 500 rowdy goons with rods and sticks shockingly vandalized not just the seminar hall, the scene of the crime, but also most of the medical inventory to wipe off the financial irregularities and medical trafficking evidence against the lobby. It almost seems certain then that without proof, the North Bengal doctor's lobby might just go scot-free. But a few days later, that crusader of justice, R.G. Kars Akhtar Ali, appeared in Kolkata High Court as proof. Sir, please investigate. A lot of scams took place in the hospital under Sandeep Ghosh. 
and the lordships obliged again and agreed for a CBI probe against Sandeep Ghosh, who arrested him and the inspector in charge of the incident, and they still languish in their custody. While Mamta Didi tried to act innocent by coming on the streets to protest against the crime. Wait, what? Protester Mamta marching against Chief Minister Mamta? I. Could anything be more ridiculous? Shedding crocodile tears, she tried to divert people's attention. Please return to puja festivities. Ajikar case is solved. Meanwhile, her ambitious nephew Abhishek Banerjee, realizing that this could lead to a weakening of Mamta's position, sided with the doctors and took the initiative to suspend important wingmen of Ghosh from the health department. Mamta has been exposed several times, including recently when she shielded Mafia Shah Jahan, main accused in the Sandesh Kali cases. Even her blabbermouth feminist leader Mahua Moitra, from whom one expected better standards, has tried to protect the lobby. There is no bigger conspiracy in this incident. Nobody has tampered with the crime scene or is covering up. The police is doing their job well. But the great thing is that the North Bengal doctors lobby has been broken by thousands of spirited doctors ready to clean their own system. Bizbo's limerick. Sinister and targeted did they plan the crime, but worse was the cover up to hide their slime. They killed both the hypocritic oath and the girl who was snatched ahead of her time. You will also find these sources listed in our video description section.